Do you remember 11 days ago when I went to mix up the record store here in Cuernavaca? All documented on video, by the way. I went to mix up 11 days ago to buy the new Metallica record, 72 Seasons, the vinyl, and I was going to do an unboxing of it. <clears throat> Excuse me, I was very excited. And I went to the record store, I went to mix up, and there was a mix up, uh, at mix up, in the words of my friend Paul Casanova, and the record wasn't available, or nor the CD. It wasn't available um, because that's the way Mexican goes. There are always problems, nothing goes as planned. Uh, that was April 14th. And then in the aforementioned video, I said I would probably buy it anyway, and I did. I, I pre ordered it from Mix Up uh, because according to them, it was going to be, be available on April 28th. So I pre ordered the record. Some of you might say vinyl, and I pre ordered it. It was going to be available on April 28th. And then do you remember just Three days ago, on Saturday, I went to Mix Up to pick up my Rod Stewart tickets for his concert that he's playing this Friday in Mexico City. And side note, the, their system didn't work, so I couldn't pick up my Rod Stewart tickets. I went to the other Ticketmaster outlet. Their system went down after I stood in line. But then while I was at, at Mix Up, um, they magically had the Metallica record, like. Uh, what, eight days before the second release date of uh, April 28th. So I, I went on my phone and I canceled my pre-order and I bought the vinyl, the record, in the store. Do you remember all that? I think you do. I hope you do. Well, guess what just happened? Mix up those Idiots, let's say. I think I think the company is run by teenagers. They sent me the record that I canceled. Okay, so let's let's do a quick recap. I drove all the way there. Took took the morning off work like a teenager. I was so excited to get the new Metallica record. Drove all the way to the other side of town. Um, uh, watched watched them open the door. I was very excited, and uh, but the record wasn't available. It was available everywhere in the world, but not in Mexico or not in Mix Up anyway. They said April 28th, so I pre-ordered it. But then I saw it and bought it a week before the pre-order was supposed to come out, canceled it and bought the actual record instead, which in the store, which there was also a video of that I did just three days ago. And, um, and then they actually sent the record. Uh, and then I sent them an email this morning and I said, and I explained this to them, I said, you know what, you, you sent this record, I canceled it three days ago. Uh, it was supposed to come out, only supposed to come out this Friday, and I will get to kiss Dress to Kill. That is coming up. Um, these preambles are getting longer and less interesting, I think. Um, and so I said, you know, you, you're, you're really screwing me up here. You're causing me a lot of problems. And um, so I said, I said, I want a refund. I want to send this thing back. And I was out down at the river, or not a river, I had like in a... You can see a video of that yesterday too. And I got a phone call saying, yeah, I'm here to deliver a package for you. And I thought, what the hell package is this? I, I don't, I'm not expecting anything. And it was this, this Metallica record, which, um, which I thought was canceled. So I emailed the uh, mix up and told them, and they said, this is unbelievable. They said, ah, yeah, we're sorry about the problem, but your email to say that you canceled it went into our spam folder. So we didn't see it in time. Now remember, this is a national company uh, realistically, the only the only um, music retailer, uh, at least national retailer, music retailer that I know of in Mexico, and they said we didn't get your your message in time to cancel it because um, because your message your email went to our spam folder, despite the fact that I emailed them directly from the link. It's ordinus at mixup.com. I got that that. Uh, that, that email address from them. I copied and pasted it into my Gmail and put it into my, into my, the message. That was how I've sent them. And so it's just, it's not like, whatever. Um, so now in addition to, to the, this other crap, now I have to take this back to, I guess the DHL, it was DHL who delivered it, nothing against DHL, but I have to now again go out of my way to, to, uh, 
to, to take this record back because I don't want two copies of 72 Seasons, the new, um, the new Metallica record. Not only that, very weird that they said, um, I have to provide photographic proof. And I've had to do this once before for something. I can't remember what it was. Maybe last year I bought something. And they said, we need you to take pictures of different angles to show that it has not been, their words, manipulated, opened, that all the original packaging. And I'm like, hey, man, it's still in the package. That It's not like I opened it. They don't know this, but it's not like I opened it and repackaging it. This is how it was delivered to me, and that's how it will be returned. So I, I have to now take pictures of this, send it to them, probably wait until tomorrow when they give me a, a return authorization number, and then I have to drive again all the way across to the other side of town, a different part of town, to, uh, to take this back to DHL. What a joke it is just to buy a fucking record. Um, this is, that's uh, maybe second in line now to how difficult it is to buy concert tickets. That, that's the most stressful thing you can go through. I would rather move uh, to another house than have to get concert tickets. I would even rather get cancer. Um, maybe that's insensitive to, to those who suffer from cancer. My dad died of cancer, so I think I'm, I'm allowed to make that, uh, that analogy. I would rather get cancer than buy concert tickets. It's such a horrible uh, experience. Uh, anyway, so that's that. So that's metallic out of the way. Now, I do have, look at this by the, um, this is from the, the, the people at Amazon. This is a, a package. It's no surprise, it's Kiss Dressed to Kill inside. This also was delivered yesterday. I, and I teased this a couple of days ago. I said I was gonna have some unboxings coming up. And this is the first one. So this, this contains Kiss Dressed to Kill. And I've talked about Kiss more than any other band by far on this channel that I've had for 17 years. Um, I haven't talked about Dress to Kill specifically. Now I did, uh, I think about two years ago, I went through all the KISS catalog from the first album up to um, Sonic um, Monster and talked about them all. And then last year I ranked them all um, and I had Dress to Kill at number three out of the 29 KISS songs, Dress to Kill was number three. So I'm gonna do this. Now um, my, it's not really a goal, but I guess ideally, and I do have Dress to Kill on the originals. I bought the originals, which is the first three uh, Kiss albums in one package. I bought that at El Chopo, I don't know, in November, I think it was. I bought that, but I want to have them all. And it's kind of my, it's not, like I said, it's not really a goal. I would like to have all the Kiss records, even the shitty ones, even for my friend Paul Casanova, if he's watching this, who kind of is like uh, obsessed with getting me into The Elder, I think. It's kind of become a running joke. If I saw The Elder for a decent, decent price, I would buy it. Um, so I thought, I don't need to buy the first three as individual albums because um, I have them all in, in the originals, the box set, but I think I will buy it. And this was a decent price. Now this was um, 800 pesos, which is, um, I guess, I mean, that's pretty expensive, but as I've talked about this, some of you may know, I've been to El Chopo recently, these people that, that work at El Chopo, or they're not that work, that sell their stuff at El Chopo, they're selling Kiss records or any records for, it's hard to get anything for less than 800 in horrible condition. These are old, you know, the original records from the 70s or maybe reprints from the 80s. They're in terrible condition uh, and they want 800, sometimes more, uh, and sometimes a horrible, horrible condition. Corners missing, uh, the spines are broken, everything. So this is a nice, juicy, shiny, delicious brand new one for uh, 800 so it's not it's it's expensive um but i guess a good deal compared to el chopo i am going to deploy the blade of my knife my little uh leatherman multi-tool knife and i'm going to open the box because that's what you do in unboxings and i'm going to open up Dress to Kill. Now, I wonder how the packaging is. It feels like it's wrapped or like it's, I can hear it sliding around, but there's not much movement, not much um, vertical movement. Horizontal, yes. Vertical, no, which uh, leads me to believe that it's packed quite well. This is the first record I've ever ordered from, uh, from Amazon, so I'm not sure what to expect. My friend Jason Satterfield is always ranting about them, how, how uh, awful they they, they pack, uh, he orders a lot of CDs in there. Apparently they pack them really bad. He gets cracked jewel cases all the time. 
Um, one quick cut. All right, here it is. All right, it's got those, uh, the airbags, I don't know what you call them. And cardboard, okay, I guess a cardboard mailer. I can put my, put the knife down. My cat loves these. All right, on it is, uh, oh, it's very light. Uh, I'm, I'm used to holding the, ah, there's, oh, I'm getting another delivery here. Ooh, live action here. I think this guy's gonna call me. Ah, yeah, all right, I gotta go get this guy. I gotta pause. Well, wasn't that the most exciting moment in YouTube history? I got a live delivery. So I got here what I was working on. This is the, the dress to kill here. And I just got, this will this will be my next unboxing. Uh, I've got a few, what, what is this? Is it, uh, some of my favorites, is it another metallic album? Is it, I, you know I love Rat. Is it Rat? Is it classic Van Halen? Is it something else? You're gonna see, um, I don't know when I'm gonna get around to, to unboxing this, but this will be my, no, you know what? This might not be my next one. I've, I'll talk about that more later. I'll, I'll put this one over here on the couch, sofa, Chesterfield, whatever it, love seat, whatever you like to call it. I'm gonna put it there. Um, so now I'll get back to uh, the dress to kill. So it's in this, uh, this mailer. And I guess you go like this, you tear the strip. There it is, dress to kill. Ooh, look at this. Hey, there it is, dress to kill. My third, I'm a Kiss fan since 1976. And there it is, dress to kill. It's in um, no dings or dents on the corner. Here's the, the hype sticker, 180 gram. Uh, audiophile vinyl. I guess they consider me to be an audiophile now because this weighs 180 grams, which is quite a scam. And I think there will be another thing when I talk about it in another unboxing. I'll maybe get to this. So this was from, um, I think this came out in 20, some of you KISS people will, will know, 2011 or 2014, 2012, somewhere around there. Uh, first vinyl, first U.S. vinyl pressing since 1985. So there it is. All right, um, and there's the back. I'm gonna, oh, now I have to take, uh, oh, just another little, a lot of edits in this video. Usually there's no edits, edits. This is the second one, and there's a fly flying around. Uh, I'm gonna also have to take another little break um, before I continue with this very momentarily. Back to your regularly scheduled pro programming. That's what they used to say. They used to really say that on TV. Um, so, so this is Dress to Kill. Now, I'm interested to see uh, what is inside this. I remember when I had this way back, long, long time ago, long time ago, um, it just had that cellophane, the, the, what do you call it, the, the inner sleeve? Um, just had, it was just that cellophane, that opaque cellophane. Always hated that. Um, I don't know if this is going to be any different, but I'm going to open up and find out. There's uh, one last look at the hype sticker before that gets cut the fuck off. Um, hmm, wow, that, that gap. There's no gap to get the knife in this. There's the spine, by the way, if you're interested in that. Um, all right, well, let's do this. All right, we just need a little opening. Um, all right, let me put that down so I don't stab myself in the eye. How exciting it is to open a new record, especially one that I've been listening to for decades. All right, so I can remove, maybe remove this. If you're bored, you saw that this is an unboxing, so, so uh, I mean, you should expect there are going to be some unboxing delays. I'll put that there. So here it is. It's kind of like a matte finish. It's embossed. The, the Kiss 
uh, logos that go all around it are, are embossed and on the back as well. There's the back. I don't think my original one was embossed like that. Now let's see what's inside. Oh, the one slightly not better than the, the cellophane wrapper. It's, uh, it's just a plain white sleeve. Boo for that. Give me something, some pictures, um, liner notes, something. That, that's terrible. Um, oh, and it's, it's kind of got that, uh, like a plastic inside. Uh, let me take this out, make sure I don't drop it. All right, there it is. There's a uh, side A, which is, uh, let's see, room service, two timer, ladies in waiting, getaway. I can't remember the order, uh, but there it is. Let me see. Get away. Oh, and then rock bottom. And then side two was uh, Come On and Love Me. Um, anything from, yeah, anything from my baby. She, Love Her All I Can and Rock All Night. So, there it is. A little blemish on there. Um, so that's it. So as far as the unboxing, ah, I, I wish there were um, more to see. I guess this is maybe how, how it originally came. When it came out in 1975, maybe there was no um, no extras that came with it, but there it is, Kiss Dress to Kill. Now I will talk about the record itself, probably not, not too much. I, I've talked about it before, but I've never done it track by track. So that's, uh, that's what I'm about to do right now. Um, as I said, this is my third, as a, as a long time, 1976 Kiss fan. Uh, this is my third favorite. I had uh, Love Gun at number one, Hotter Than Hell 2, and Dress to Kill 3, although I think this maybe could sometimes be number two. Um, and I didn't get this. This came out in 1975. I became a Kiss fan in 1976 with Alive. And I never had this, I believe it was 1985. My, my, good, my best friend at that time, Pete, um, and we saw Gene Simmons together in 2017. He flew here to visit me. We saw Gene in Mexico in 2017. He had this when I first met him in, uh, in 2017. And I didn't have uh, Dress to Kill at that point. So the only, the only songs I knew from this at that point were uh, the ones that were on Alive, which were what? Uh, um, rock Bottom, Rock and Roll All Night, Come on and love me, and she. I think that was all from from Dress to Kill. So I didn't know uh, uh, ladies in waiting and two timer room service. Anything for my baby ghetto. I didn't know any of those songs. I think, as far as I remember, until 1985. So I was a little bit of a latecomer for Dress to Kill. So going through this track by track, room service. I'll say this side one, side one, track one, room service. One of my, I, I would like to say top five Kiss songs ever. I'm not sure how accurate that is, but. Man, my uh, room service is a just an incredible song. I can't believe that it had been around for ten years before I heard it, and um, and something I think about these the first three Kiss albums is Gene, especially Gene, maybe all of them, but Gene's bass playing was really good. And I remember especially the chorus for Room Service. The, the, it reminds me of uh, I can't really sing that bass line, and maybe it's the guitar too. Uh, for me, when when I kind of play it in my head. It, rem it reminds it morphs a little bit into um, Flaming Youth. Which was from a demo they had done called Mad Dog. Um, but Room Services, the Room Service. And I love that bass, Room Service. Baby, I could use a meal. Room Service, you do what you feel. Doom, doom, doom. Gene played great back then. Uh, so great opening song. Love it. Room service, baby, I could use mail. It's, uh, I'm feeling low, no place to go, and I'm thinking that I'm going to scream because a hotel all alone is not a rock and roll star's dream, but just as I'm about to shut the light and go to bed, a lady calls and asks if I'm too tired or if I'm just too dead for room service. Uh, my plane's delayed, and I'm afraid they're going to keep me waiting. Keep me waiting here until 9. Then a stewardess, now they would call the flight attendant, which is not not good for, uh, for the... Um, the rhythm of the song, but then a stewardess in a tight blue dress says, I got the time. 
and just says, just as I'm about to take my coat and catch my flight, she says, oh, please, she's on her knees one more time. Before I leave, I get some room service. Uh, my, um, in my hometown, hanging around with all the ladies treating me real good. Then sweet 16, you also couldn't say that. You couldn't talk about uh, room service from a 16-year-old girl. Then sweet 16, looking hot and lean, says, I wish you would. Uh, just then, I'm about to tell her, yes, I think I can. I see her dad, he's getting mad of all the times. He knows that I'm in need of, you guessed it, room service. Oh, I gotta listen to that song immediately after I finish this st stupid video. Two timers next, the Gene song. I love this song. Uh, da, 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 da. She thinks she's high fashion, she thinks she looks divine, and that's what I keep telling her. I tell her all the time. And she says, uh, she tells me she likes fast cars, she says she likes mine the best. And just because of that baby, you think she'd forget the rest? No, no, no. I don't know if that's in my top five or top 10, but my God, too. Maybe I like this album better than Hotter Than Hell. I'm getting very excited if you can't tell. And I don't even drink coffee. Um, ladies in waiting, so you've been to the market and the meat looks good tonight. Um, and the ladies in waiting, We'll show you what it's all about. So you move on down the line. All the ladies are looking fine. So fine. Uh, Getaway is next. Now this is an Ace, written by Ace, song, but sung by Peter Chris. Although with great um, backing vocals from Gene. Gene was great at the backing vocals. I think on this album especially, Room Service, that was him doing Room Service. Uh, and then pause, baby, I could use a meal. Then back to Gene, room service. Uh, Gene sang, um, I got, especially I think during, the, is it the last verse? Uh, when Peter's just screaming, gotta get away. I think it's Gene doing, yeah, I gotta get away. I can't remember. Um, that, that's one of, and I, I think I've said this before. Peter's songs are, the, the songs that Peter sings, not that, and or that he wrote, in this case, he sings it. Um, they're typically my least favorite on the album. Um, Getaway is a great song. One of my top Peter Chris songs, Peter Chris sung songs for sure. Uh, and then the ending of Getaway, da, 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 is the ending of the live version of Rock and Roll All Night on Alive. They kind of tagged the end of the studio version of Getaway onto the live version of Rock and Roll All Night. Uh, and the last song on side one is Rock Bottom with that classic intro. Um, just, just so beautiful. One of, the, my, one of my favorite acoustic guitar sounding things. I don't care if, you, if you're one of these guitar jocks and you want to tell me that it takes no talent to play that. I really don't care. I just care how much I love how that acoustic guitar sounds. Uh, then it gets rough, as Paul Stanley says in um, Unplugged after the acoustic intro. I can wait a day. And I should say also, every single song on Alive from, from the first three, Kiss, 1974, Hotter Than Hell, uh, also 1974, and uh, Dress to Kill, 1975, all of the live versions are better than the studio versions, including Rock Bottom. Uh, the, rock, the live version of Rock Bottom, for all these, is just so much better. Uh, so you would, you would now turn this over if you were listening to it, and the first song on side two that you, were li that you would listen to is... Come on and love me! Da -na 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 -da -da. Acoustic guitar in this version, not in the live version. Um, uh, come on and love. Uh, I'm a man. I'm no no. What's the what's the first line? The opening song of I've been listening to this album for forty something years. Um, She's a dancer, a romancer. I'm a Capricorn and she's a Cancer. She saw my picture in a music magazine. When she met me, said she'd get me, touched her hips and told me that she'd let me. Uh, I took her hand, baby, this is what I said. I said, baby, baby, don't you hesitate. I gotta listen to this whole album. Uh, next is Anything From My Baby. Now this one, as I mentioned earlier, let me put this down gently. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'd never heard anything from my baby or two-timer, uh, ladies-in-waiting, getaway. I'd never heard any of those until 1985. 
when I heard this album, at that time, uh, anything for my baby, be I think instantly became my favorite Kiss song ever. I couldn't believe that they had a song that great that I'd never heard before. And I still stand by how much I how much I love anything for my for my baby. And I I've read somewhat recently, like in the last year, that. Paul Stanley doesn't like that song. They've never played it live. I think they played it on a cruise last year or two years ago or something. You know, they do these Kiss cruises. And apparently, now I don't know if somebody was speculating, ah, they don't play it because Paul doesn't like it, or if Paul has ever said at some point that he doesn't like it. Um, I love anything from my baby. It's kind of a nice, has the same drum intro as uh, Rock and Roll All Night. But uh, I think anything from my baby is, uh, ah, there's a misprint here, ha. Huh? It says N thing, it's missing the Y. I don't know if, if the camera can see that. Look at that. N, N thing for my baby. Ha, ah, uh, any other? I think everything else looks okay. All right, uh, next is she, and, I, and if I'm being repetitive, forgive me or too bad, but she is, I would say also in my, no, I think for sure in my top five, which, I don't know what, Watching You, King of the Nighttime World, Calling Dr. Love, 100,000 Years, She, Parasite, I don't know, Got to Choose, um, Plaster Caster, Christine 16, I've always cited as my number one ever, but She is very, very top, top, top level favorite song. Um, she Walks by Moonlight, and just by coincidence, earlier today, um, I, I, you know, you get these recommendations on YouTube and she was just, a, you know, they played she on the Midnight Special show in 1975. It was on the, one of the Kissology DVDs, which I have over here. And the Midnight Special apparently has, from the 70s, has a YouTube channel. They just uploaded it and I watched it this early this morning and holy shit, Kiss was so good in 1975. Um... Next is uh, two more, Lover All I Can. Anthrax did a great cover of that, and when they did that, you know the part, if, if, you, if you're a Kiss fan, of course you know the part. Um, I guess it's in the second verse. She's so, easy, she's, so, she's so easy to please and it doesn't take money. This is, um, and then it's, uh, she's so, it's Paul and Jean saying she's so easy to please and it doesn't take money, and then just Paul says, no, no, no. Oh. And when Anthrax did it, they got Gene to guess on it, and Gene did that part. No, 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 he sang it. Paul's little thing, but with, with Gene's style. Um, not a favorite, but I really, really, really love that song. That was another that I hadn't heard until 1985 when I got this. Uh, and this that goes back to, uh, Lover All I Can goes back to Wicked Lester, and the Wicked Lester versions are also excellent. Lover All I Can is a... Is a not quite top song, but I love it. I might have to go back and maybe I would I would um, renumber. Maybe this would be number two. Maybe slightly higher than Higher Than Hell. Uh, and then the last one is Rock and Roll All Night. I don't know what to say about that. It's a song that uh, I've heard maybe more than any other song, at least in, in terms of listening to songs involuntarily, because you hear this at sporting events, parties, people driving by on the street playing it in their car. TV commercials, TV shows, wherever you, you can't escape rock and all night, which obviously takes away from it. Um, but I can only go back to, to when I was a kid and I, I listened to, I heard rock and all night on a live. And it was, I don't know if it was my favorite song at the time, but I, I loved it back then. It's not that I don't love it now, I'm just so, so tired of it. Enter Sandman, uh, you know, We Will Rock You. And I, I've talked about this many times, Crazy Train. Enter, uh, I said enter Sandman, you get, you get tired of them. Doesn't mean they're not a good song or that they're not good songs. So that's it. Um, hey, Kiss, Dressed to Kill, my, my, uh, my favorite band ever, Kiss or Metallica, for, for different reasons. Um, and as we, they, call that a, they call us a teaser in the industry. Um, I don't know when I'm gonna get to this. And this is, I think this is not the one I'm expecting another one today. I think this feels heavier than it should be. This is not the one I think they'll be doing next. That'll be something else. So uh, you can stick around for that. And then there will be another one after that. I have, I guess, two more unboxings coming up. Uh, but anyway, that was it for uh, a little bit of Metallica 72 Seasons, a little bit of the Mystery Box, and a lot of Kiss 
dressed to kill.